Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about current sources. In this case we will look at the Wilson current source and this is our example number 3. And we will use the MOSFET for this Wilson current source. Of course we will work out the calculations step by step and also verify our calculations using SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have discussed the circuit also using the BGTs. Now we are using the MOSFET, the N-channel enhancement MOSFET. They are all matched, so M1 is equal to M2 is equal to M3, so they have the same threshold voltage, they have the same conduction parameter, and they have also the channel length modulation, all of them are zero. In this case, we have two DC voltage source for our circuit VDD and VSS, so we have plus 10 and minus 10 volts. We would like the design for a load current, here ID3, which is then 8.1 milliamps. And as said before in other discussions, the ID3 here is very close, actually almost equal to IRF. So there are really small, small, small differences because of the gate current, which is actually almost zero. So you can perfectly say it's equal to IRF. So let's see what we need to do in order to get this load current of 8.1 milliamp. So the solutions, let's look at our calculations first and let's designate some nodes here in order to get towards our calculations. The Kirchhoff's current law KCL at node X will give us the following. As said before, the gate currents of all the MOSFETs are zero, definitely for zero, uh, DC. So we can say IRF is just ID1 plus zero, etc. So we have now this, again, as said before, gate currents are zero. Now Kirchhoff's voltage law KVL will be then from top to the all the way to the bottom is VDD plus is equal to I mean VDD is equal to the voltage across the resistor R which is using Ohm's law plus the VGS3 so going here from this node to this node and then from here to VGS1 and then plus VSS that's the complete cycle now if we also make an expression for the ID3, which is where we need to go, that is our drain current, that is given by this expression, again, assuming saturation region of operation. Now, this is the e expression, and we have here a threshold voltage, the conduction parameter, and also VGS3. But we know what the ID3 must be, so we can express now the required gate to source voltage here in order to get the ID3. So for that we need to just rewrite this, so we get the EVGS3 is this one, of course with a plus and a minus because of this square root. And you have this expression, when you now substitute the values, you get now the ID3 of 0.0081 over 0.01, because it's 10 milliamps per square volts, plus one of the gate of the, of the threshold voltage. Now you have two solutions, one of them is the 1.9, because you get the plus 0.9 plus one, and the other one is minus 0 0.9 plus 1, which is 0 0.1. Now, which one is now a valid solution? Now, this is definitely larger than the threshold voltage, which is a condition we need to meet for our saturation region of operation formula. So this is a valid solution, and this is smaller than the threshold voltage, so that is the invalid solution. So we have two solutions, mathematically correct, but this is the practical solution we need to use. That means VGS3 is 1.9 volts. Now we need to see the following thing also. Since the threshold voltage of all the three transistors, V, v threshold 1, threshold 2 and threshold 3, are equal to each other, and also the conduction parameters, we can say that also the drain currents of all the transistors are exact same, and also of course the reference current, because ID1 was I equal to IRF. So that means this is also equal to 8.1 milliamps. So 8.1 milliamps here, 8.1 milliamps also here, but it's also here, it's also here, and it's also here. So it doesn't matter. Then we can write the following. Now, since this ID1 and ID2 and ID3 are all the same, they must be produced by the same gate to source voltage. Because other parameters in this formula, which is similar for ID1 and similar for ID2, have the same parameters. So we can say this is also the same. So we can say this is 1.9 volts, but this is also 1.9 volts from node Y to the VSS. So we can 
also equate that to 1.9 volts. Then we have the following. We can now set an equation from this Kirchhoff voltage law and express now R in terms of that other parameter, which is then VDD minus VSS minus VAG, VGS3 minus VGS1 and divided by the IRF, of course. And IRF is this load current, since they are equal to each other. Then we have this 10 minus minus 10 minus 1.9 minus 1.9. And you can now the calculation you get exactly two kilo ohms so we have now our resistor we require for our design now let's also check this this is the simulation circuit we see the m1 m2 m3 they have exact same length and the width so all of them is 100 micrometers you see the irf here is 8.1 milliamps and also the load so they're exact same what you also note is the gate currents are almost zero, so they are in the range of femtoamps. amps. That is approximately 1.9 femtoamps. amps, this is approximately 1.8 or 1.78 femtoamps, amps in the similar here. So you can consider that as almost zero, because femto is 10 to the power minus 15, so it's almost nothing compared to milliamps. And again here, ID1 is also 8.1 milliamps, and ID2 also. So we can already verify that our assumption or what we said before about the currents are also verified here. So this is as expected and we have our resistor here we required. Okay, let's also do the following analysis which is the simulation result but then for load voltage versus load current for that we use this circuit. Now we split actually now the, uh, the actually replace this ground node here between the two DC sources and bring it here down and disconnect the voltage source here from the right side and we sweep this voltage source here from some value to a higher value and we observe what kind of uh, load current will be here by changing the, the potential at this node and this is now the result this is interesting you can see the horizontal axis are load voltage going from 2 volts to 20 and this is our load current you can see it is sort of increasing rapidly and then stabilizes actually at 2.8 volts approximately that's actually what you see here so and then it stays quite constant so at some point it stays constant so and that is the 8.1 milliamps so you can of course work out why this is 2.8 volts there that is of course another uh, thing but you can perfectly say here and also takes some safety margin that you say after the three volts approximately three volts approximately this current source so at this node if you place here three volts or higher will give you a constant current and that will be then supplied for example to your differential pair or any other amplifier to get a constant gain so this is again verified and we see the perfectly almost perfectly flat line of course if you zoom in here and zoom in a lot you can see of course some slope and we have discussed this also in the previous videos, but that is a very small, small, small slope. So the current is almost constant. All right, this is our example number three. We have discussed now the Wilson current source using the MOSFETs, in this case, and channel enhancement MOSFETs. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know in the comment section. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share our videos such that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.